And we are live on Wednesday night in April, April the 3rd, the deep midwinter that never stopped. Here we are um, with VT Talk as ever was. And it's quite a special one tonight uh, because it's it's good news. Good news! That sort of thing. Isn't it, Dave? <laughs> it's good news. I've, you will see I have, uh, as my guests in the studio tonight, aside from the effervescent loveliness that is Sav. Good evening to you, Sav. Good evening. And how effervescent are we tonight? On a scale of one to ten, I'm going at a minus six. <laughs> oh, my good God. Yes, she's a little bit tired. She's been, she been very, very busy uh, dodging being painted, I understand. Yes. <laughs> More than could be said for a few other people as well. Yes. What, what, how was it put to me? If it if it doesn't move, paint it. If it doesn't need painting, cover it. And I'm here to tell you somebody did, but I'm not going to show the photo, not until tomorrow. Um, and in, in the other Camarero, you will see the, the, the boyish charm. <laughs> That's, I'm sorry, I can see what's going on. The boyish charm that is Dave Kitson. And Dave, further again, still has another guest in that little box just beside his left nipple. And that would be Mr. Andrew Sutton of that ilk. Hello, Andy. Hello. This is it, it's, it's well. it, yes. It's just it's too complicated to handle, isn't it? Really. Yeah, it's I'm, double. I'm confused. You're confused. You will be. Ima imagine how that makes me feel. Anyway, tonight, Mr. Sutton is probably going to be taking front and centre. He has a skill set, which is. Um, quite important for what we're going to be talking about or a large part of what we're going to be talking about tonight but i'm giving away the plot and we can't have that before we've had the titles so here we go with tonight's vt talk And there you go, that was the titles, and here we are back in the room uh, with myself, Sav, Dave, and Andy Sutton down there in Brizzle, down in the far southwest of the country, where apparently it's just as cold as it is everywhere else. But Andy, you've been, um, you've been doing a lot of thinking, and we've been doing a lot of talking, and between us all, at your behest, and, and from the seed from which you've sown, there is an idea, and I would love you to tell everybody what it's all about. Okay, okay. Well, we're all aware of this uh, predicament we're in with the EU, and um, we as electronic cigarette users hold the ultimate power, really, in this argument and this fight. So my idea, very basically, and we'll go into it in greater detail, and we want chat's input into how it turns out, um, we want to generate media that they can't ignore. That can be video, it can, you know, we just want to produce professional viral videos and slightly longer form videos as well that people can actively link to and send to MPs, MEPs and the media. That's it really, in a nutshell. Nutshell. We're supposed to get an hour out of this, Andy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What to talk about, believe me. Oh, absolutely, there is, yes. Have we, uh, have we a name for the project? Well, at the moment, it's called Smoke Without Fire, the story of the e-cig. Um, and that's what we're sort of working on at the moment. And the reason why it's got a name is we are planning to, because these things cost money to do, we are planning to launch a crowdfunding campaign um, we'll talk about the costs that are involved. No one involved with it. My, I, I'm fronting the project. I'm, I'm going to give my skills and ability to be able to make, you know, I make TV programs for a living. I know what the media are looking for to become interested in our plight. We haven't had that yet with the, with the, uh, the press coverage that we've had so far. And I'm looking to create something that makes people go, hold on a second, this is a very good story and we need to get behind it. 
And I believe with a little bit of support from the community, we can put something together that really gets them listening to us. And together, if we shout loud enough through social media, through emails to people, we've been telling you to you know, write to your MP and your MEPs. Um, we will provide a link to the video that will accompany your argument perfectly. Righty-ho. Sav, I'm pretty sure that the chat will already have had something to say. Am I right? There's been a few comments. Um, so far, they've all been incredibly positive, and also a few people that have um, offered assistance. I won't read out all of those, but I will put them in touch with Andy. Righty-ho. That's... Sorry, Andy, go again. I was just saying that's very encouraging. Thank you very much. Well, it is, because my understanding of all of this is... Uh, that, that you want to use user-generated video, is that right? That is a big part of it. Um, as I say, together, together we've got a big chance to make a loud noise. And I've read on the forums and I've seen in other places, groups of people are coming together and they're planning to do things. Um, if we can cover that and, and put it, in front of the people that need to see it happening, then then we are there. And everyone who's involved with this story, everyone who picks up an e-cig and doesn't want it taken away, can get involved by shooting a short video, telling us your story. That will be included in some way and shown to the people that need to hear it. Okie doke. Now, during the conversations we've had, you say you're going to be when you say you're going to front it. You're not talking about being in front of the camera, are you? Oh no, 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 no. I, I, you know, I'm going to use my expertise that I've gained over 15 years of being in TV, and put it together in such a way that the people who need to hear it will understand. And that is ultimately our story has been negatively sensation sensationalised. We need to turn that into a positive and tell our side because it's so easy for a researcher to go online and find out about the, the dangers of electronic cigarettes and that's why it's being banned. We have got incredible stories to tell that are incredibly positive and they're just not being heard at the moment. So, and I know a lot of organizations are out there doing it as well, trying to, trying to, get, trying to get their side of the story heard. This, I hope, will enable those groups to all be brought together and be packaged in a video that then can be sent on. So it's not we're, we're not we're not saying we're going to be doing this and it's our thing. We are hoping to expose what everybody's doing to the world. OK, now. We, we put these things together. I assume that they'll be available on the likes of YouTube and Vimeo and all of the other file sharing sites. They'll be available on our website and stuff like that. What, what do you envisage the, uh, the personality? Do, are we going to have a personality fronting each of the... Because as I remember, we're talking about short ones and a couple of longer ones. Will there be any yeah. kind of continuity in people voicing over or presenting the camera or whatever well that's where that's where the crowdfunding campaign that's why we need to crowdfund this because to get to get continuity of it whether it be celebrities that we know in the uk who use electronic cigarettes who might at the moment might not know anything about it and we've made initial sort of we've put feelers out to those people um obviously their time costs money um and despite the the cause that we know is 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 so good for us vapors it will cost money to get those people to to sign up and and to to shout loudly for us it won't take very long to do in terms of physical production time but um those voices that will be peppered through it that will get the media to you know those celebrities will get newspapers uh, Sky News, BBC, looking at us and taking us seriously. So, again, it, it comes down to a little bit of cash that we hope to ri rise, uh, raise through the, the crowdfunding campaign. Okie do. Well, when you say a little bit of cash, I'm, I'm, I can almost guarantee everybody's going, how much is a little bit? 
Um, no, absolutely, absolutely. Because I know how much it costs to produce a feature length thing that would go into cinemas and you're looking at 250,000 minimum, but we're not talking about mm. anything like that, are we? No, 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 no. It's um, compared to that, it, as the industry would call it, it's, it's pocket change. But, you know, in these hard financial times, you know, we, that's not that's not that's not realistic. But what we can do is raise enough money to be able to get those people on board, to get crews to shoot it, to shoot certain parts of it professionally so it can be taken seriously. And to give you an idea of scale, um, there's there's broadcast costs, which are astronomic. But um, as myself and the people who cost the most amount of money would probably be doing me a favor. Um, we will be able to achieve broadcast quality and you know a pretty shiny finished product for what would be sort of corporate video. So you're looking at about for every minute of video that is finished and ready to go, you're looking at about probably between seven seven hundred well, between it's a thousand pounds a minute, basically. But if we're looking at generating fifteen to twenty minutes of media that is either two seven-minute longer-form documentaries and then breaking it up into one-minute virals, we can produce an awful lot of noise through that. And then once we've spent that money, that media then can be re reworked and reshaped into lots of other things. So once that money is spent and purposed into this pro production, then it can keep rolling and and you know it's all going to be in the uh within the community so there's going to be no restrictions on the footage in terms of you know once it's out there it's out there do what you want with it if you think you can you know send it to someone send it to someone it's going to do some good do it Indeed. you know it's, it's for the community right and i think we've got stuff coming in from chat because the signal came <laughs> We've got a lot coming in from chat. Um, a lot of people are asking that came in a few minutes late if you can just go over the very beginning that you, uh, you started with because they missed it and they're getting a little bit confused. But I'll go over some of the stuff I've got first before we do that. Uh, there's been again loads of offers for help. Mark Shaw says, I'm game for anything that will help our side of the story. Dolphin says, Andy, what do you need from us other than money, of course? Rat thinks I'm in too. So many people saying, yet yeah, they'd love to help. Um, Rat Finks also said regarding Andy not being in front of the camera, boo, he should be in front of the camera, that would get all the female MEPs to take notice. I'm sorry, Andy, I just had to read that one. Moonlit not, said, not just the females. <laughs> There'll be some, no. of the blo some of the blokes over there that think he's a bit of a bear, you know. <laughs> that is true, and I'm also with apologies to Rat Finks for reading that one. Uh, <laughs> Moonlit has said... Where do you intend for this to be shown other than social video sites? Is there a chance getting this somewhere more mainstream? And suggestions have been things like cinema adverts and do community TV channels still exist? Winter Rogue oh. says we need something lighthearted with a serious undertone, make people laugh and think about it at the same time. And Very Boring says these days if you generate enough hits on a web video, the mainstream will pay attention. This, which which is all all perfectly true, of course. But again, but it, yes. I, I think as as a, as, a, as a network, as a community, if you like the Vapor Trails community, we are so lucky to have this man here because he's got fingers into places that other people don't know those places exist. He can get the ear of all sorts of folks, can't you, Andy? Well, I, I I've been putting proposals together for a documentary um, for. As long as I've been a, you know, a vapor, and um, they all say, "Well, well, show us something," or, or you know, they're, they're they're very hard to see our way of thinking. So that if if let's for, let's give an example. Imagine if uh, on a certain day, um, let's say on Saturday night during one of my shows, we all decide to all all let's say seventy viewers decide to tweet a video to Sky News. They're going to get 70 videos from a group of people. That is, if we keep on doing that, keep the pressure on, that is going to get noticed. I would like to think so. And once that content is, is generated, I will certainly be working as hard as I can to be getting something into the mainstream media as well. So we're going to be attacking this from all different angles. Okay, I mean we can we can look at 
Yeah, I mean, I've got some contact at the BBC who, you know, at Inside Out and one or two other shows, they may be, uh, if they see some finished footage that, that looks good and looks as though it's got decent production behind it, they might well take it. And again, I'm sure that people in the audience, whether it's live or, or, or whether you're watching video on demand, you'll have contacts as well. Even as daft as sending a link of the video to your local newspaper. Absolutely. If it's punchy and pithy and it's doing the job that it's supposed to do, then it'll it'll it, it peaks interest. As as a an ex editor of a national periodical, I was always on the lookout for something a little bit different, something that had a kind of a wow factor. It didn't have to be wow, it could just be oh wow. But that was enough to pique the interest. Sorry, Andy. And, and make you want to go further with it um, so that you, could, you, would, you would want to find out more. And my feeling is that if, if this goes ahead the way we're talking about, um, we should be able to feed it into all kinds of news outlets, magazine out outlets, radio outlets, television outlets. Even, I've noticed, Alan Sugar um, on, the, yeah. on the Twitter over the last four or five days was saying he was doing some research into e -seeks. And his son and he, between them, have this play-out system that they've got in all sorts of different places. And it could well be that we tweet them at Alan Sugar and go, hey, if you're thinking about e -cigs, this might not be a bad thing for you to do. Does all that fit in with, with what you're looking at doing, Andy? Completely, completely. I mean, it just, I mean, to me, you know, when you see a celebrity, if say, let's say if you're not on Twitter, I would strongly suggest as much as you, you might not, support what it stands for it is a, it is ultimately a, a very useful tool for a community and a group of people who are in our situation it gives us the, the instant ability to get something under somebody's nose and you know it say if you uh, subscribe to a, a a celebrity's feed and you see them tweeting you know if you tweet text they might read it and just dismiss it but if we've sent them a video that has some element of interest that makes them sit up and pay attention a retweet for the amount of people that they have followers will then concentrate our argument to all those people and and i'm not looking to produce stuff that is only of interest to vapors it's got to be of interest to human beings everywhere you know because ultimately you're looking at a group of people who have been who through government action are looking to lose a, a freedom. And that is a very good theme of a story. I mean, you know, I was talking to a, a director friend of mine who's interested to get involved with it as well. And um, he, he said, you know, you vapors, if, if this was Star Wars, we're the Ewoks. <laughs> so we could bring down an empire. I think I've got the wrong glasses on for that one. I should have my little round ones on to be an Ewok. Well, that's why I'm growing the beard. I was going to say, just because your beard's running amok. <laughs> you see, I'd, I've, I've been wondering for a while why Mr. Kitson was growing his as well. Yeah. Sav, so, so again, I can see the eyeballs. I can see the eyeballs going. There's got to be more comments coming. There's a lot of comments. Um relating to what you're saying about Twitter and getting it out there and names of people like Stephen Fry has been mentioned quite a bit but there was one thing that was brought up earlier on um, would, how would vendors fit into the picture? That's a very good question uh, how would vendors fit into the picture? It's, it's um, you know obviously we, we, we buy all our stuff from vendors and they play a, a massive part in it so in terms of their reputation from you know in terms of the safety element i hope to give them a voice as well really so you know it's it we're all part of the same story and they do play a big part but like i said before we're looking to bring in every aspect of of this wonderful world of electronic cigarettes into this um and make it accessible to to a world that at the moment doesn't really know about it in general and, and on the most part, doesn't know that it's going to be taken away from us. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm very heartened by this because I do think the visual media particularly uh, pack a, a heavier punch than the written media. 
uh, whether it's web based or whether it's you know the 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 broadsheets or what have you um, you've just got to look at you know a single viral video of a Filipino bloke dancing along like he's riding a horse to a song that is instantly forgettable gets how many hits has it had now 17 million 20 million a billion I don't know I, I mean, think it's into the billions now yeah it's, yeah it, it's Imagine a, if he was smoking an e-cig oh god yes I, I mean exactly that <laughs> exactly that that's exactly the point if we can get something together under your tutelage guidance and mentorship um that that pulls that kind of an audience then that's just amazing i think that's a good point to take the adverts we'll go there now and when we come back i want to talk about how users can get involved with whatever equipment they've got to hand so we'll be back in two minutes with a few sage words of advice don't go anywhere And we are back in the room. Um, I'm going to throw this straight to Sav because she's just told me what was said and you cannot miss this. Sav? Best comment ever so far from Very Boring and he says, Star Wars and Star Trek meet at last. Rebel Alliance, Uslot versus the Borg. <laughs> I think that's brilliant, that one. Absolutely brilliant. Mr Kitson, you've been sitting in the background listening to all of this. What do you make of it so far? Ah oh, well, obviously I think it's a good idea. Uh, I should point out to, to people that um, Andy has been researching this for a long time. Long time. Um, uh, I think uh, you know what 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 you'd like to do uh, is you know you're pretty sure the way the direction you want to take it in. I think it's fair to say, isn't it, Andy? Um, but we're hoping that we get some good feedback from you guys uh, to to steer this a little. You know, and, and make sure we get it right. Just to recap, Andy, you're looking at making sort of several sort of short virals, really. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the idea is to get enough funding behind it that we, we've got the option to either do short virals, depending on what the community wants. Um, and once we've got the material for those short virals, there might be, say, if, you know, I've got an interview with somebody interesting who says something great, or someone submitted some user-generated footage that they've got a fantastic story, you know, that can all go into something that is longer form. That product then can easily be sent off to broadcasters, news outlets, and they might run some of it, but the likelihood is that they will say that we've done this and that we're doing this campaign and that we're, we're you know, we've, we've unleashed this story onto the internet and we've hope, hopefully generated some waves. And, and then yeah. they will follow up. And, and the important thing is that, you know, our, our side of the story gets heard from the people who are doing it. You watch things like The Right Show and, and you get, uh, you know, the, the audience is built from people who aren't got singing from the same hymn yeah. yeah. sheet. Their, their, yeah. their, their stories are, are what the media want that fit in with their end game. And we've got to change, change that a little bit. And, and we can only do that by, by making a racket. And uh, I know as well that you're uh, sort of contacting some celebs to uh, yes, front up yeah, some yeah, yeah. I, I've, as well. I mean, 
you know, we, we know of celebrities that 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 vape, um, and and I'm I'm in the process of of contacting their agents and securing time. The beauty with doing something like a viral video is that you know we can pre we can prepare a, a statement that they that they agree with and that, that they can just say it doesn't take very long and and you know th their time is valuable and, and and then we can we can do all the hard work when we've got it really indeed indeed um, and and actually that brings me almost crashingly to the user provided footage now I was out on Tuesday night, I do apologise Mark, but an opportunity came up that I've never had before and that was to meet with Gillis. Gillis, a Horton lad who lives in Cambridge and was actually up here for a few days. So I said, you know, we went and got together. And while we were talking, he said he'd been thinking about putting some video together and because we, Dave keeps asking for it, I keep asking for it, we all keep asking for user produced video because it's good stuff. But a lot of people appear to have got this idea that we want it broadcast quality and stuff like that. And that you need the kind of gear that Dave uses, I use, that Andy's used to use now in the field. Um, you know, the, the high-end, expensive type of stuff. And and you don't. Now, Dave Kitts, I'll try that again. Dave Kitts and Andy Sutton and myself had a conversation earlier on today where we were talking about this. And... Dave Kitson, Dave K. Well, I don't know why I'm putting the K on there because I'm a Dave too, but I'm talking, so it has to be the other one, hasn't it, really? It's got to be that one over there. So Dave Protest said... Protestation, my dear boy. Absolutely. I don't, it's, I'm getting old. What can I tell you? It's a different haircut. It works that way. But Dave turned around and he said, uh, why don't you put a, get, a video together to show how easy it is to do with stuff that, that you've got at hand? And I thought, well, why not? So stop the Skype call... And I must have been gone all of 20 minutes, was I, Dave? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Right. And he is, he is what, what you need to do. Let me show you how easy it is. If you've got a smartphone, that really is all you need. Have a look or at this. Or an Android. Well, is an Android not a smartphone? That's uh, a matter of opinion, isn't it? <laughs> back to Star Wars again. Absolutely. Yeah, right. So a smartphone or an Android, or an iPad, or any of the pads, they've all, anyway, have a watch, you'll see. Hiya. Videoing from your iPhone is actually quite simple to do, and I'm just gonna set up an iPhone shoot, so that you can see how I would go about doing it, if I'm on me Todd, um, and try and pull a video together. Um, this is the basic. It's an iPhone. Set it into camera mode. Now I'm going to use the front, the back camera, the one that, that, that faces away from the screen. So the thing to do is to set it onto whatever it is you're going to use. And then using the viewfinder, you'll be able to spot whether or not it's going to work. And you just use marks on the wall or whatever your background is to make sure you're going to be in shot. I'm going to be sitting in that red chair. I'm just going to shoot a little couple of minutes of video to see whether or not I've got this at the right height. So set it away. And here we go. Hi, this is Dave. I started using electronic cigarettes, not because I wanted to quit, but because I wanted to be able to smoke where I couldn't smoke. Four years later, all I use is an e-cigarette. I get my nicotine from that. I don't harm anybody else. And as a really good byproduct, I'm gonna live longer because I'm using an electronic cigarette. What the EU is proposing to do now would make it very, very difficult for me to live longer. They would take 15 years off my life. My name's David Dawn. Thank you for listening. And that's it. I've recorded what I want to record. So you stop the recording. And then I need to watch back what I've been recording. So let's have a look at that and see how it looks. And here it is. Head and shoulders, perfectly done. I'll show you.
and it's it's actually as easy as that there's no need for big soft boxes and tripods and black magic 4k cameras and all the rest of this kind of stuff if you've got an iphone canon, you, C300s. canon c300s dave's gonna have six of them apparently um you you don't need any of that and and the reason behind that is that it's your story that people need to hear um just so you know what uh, even a crap editor can do with a piece of footage that's got a good story and you might and you, well you'll see what i've done with it and and trust me i'm nowhere near as good at doing this kind of thing as that there sutton fella down in brizzel on the southwest where it's just as cold as it is down here you just you knock it up to us we knock it straight down to andy sutton and andy works his magic and here's a little bit of magic i did this is what I shot on the iPhone and you'll see how good it can be. Hi, this is Dave. I started using electronic cigarettes, not because I wanted to quit, but because I wanted to be able to smoke where I couldn't smoke. Four years later, all I use is an e-cigarette. I get my nicotine from that. I don't harm anybody else. And as a really good byproduct, I'm going to live longer because I'm using an electronic cigarette. My name's David Dorn. Thank you for listening. There you go. It took, what, two and a half minutes to sit down and shoot. It took ten minutes to do a quick edit on it. Stick some titles on, a little bit of music under the bottom. And Andy can do all of that. We'll take care of everything. All you need to do is prepare the footage. And I'm going to I'm going to throw this at Sav because I'm, I can guarantee that there'll be comments coming from things like that. Sav, over to you. Yeah, we did have a question that you've addressed perfectly, which was from Moonlit, and he asked, "What are we talking about in terms of quality?" I'm guessing HD is desirable minimum, whether it's a webcam, phone camera, point and shoot, or full DSLR. And you've answered that very nicely. Well, I'm sure... Something to that as well. Go on, Andy. In terms of what we're looking to do with the footage, uh, there are, are a couple of little rules, and, and, and I'll stick something on, on the Facebook page and, and, and on the forum as well. The, you know, picture quality is great. If you've got HD, then shoot HD, that's fine. What is also massively important is that we can hear what you're saying. Audio is... Is important now. I know you know. I'm not talking about running microphones and and doing all that sort of stuff. Hearing your story is very important, and that includes like not having music on in the background. Not you know, just just be aware of your surround. You know, during a quiet moment, just just do it when you can, um, because the, you know these clips. It might just be a sentence. It might just be if you get emotional about something. It's those little moments that really do appeal to the people who are going to matter to this. And the, the people that are making these laws and these, these regulations have, have a constant access to the media. This, through the social medias and through these videos, this is our chance to get that access. We've already got it. You know, we've got the largest communication tool at our disposal, at our fingertips, and that's what I hope this campaign will do, is it will, will enable people who don't have the technical ability to do it themselves to be able to package these things in such a way that it gets out there. That's it, really. Absolutely. And, and while you're talking about sound, here's a, another little pointer for you that a lot of people overlook. The microphone in your smartphone, your Android phone, whatever kind of phone it is you've got, is super sensitive and very, very good. They have to be because they don't just do telephone calls anymore, they're doing all sorts of things. What you can do, all of them, the Androids and everything else, have um, uh, a recording um, app that you can get, and they're usually free if they don't already come with a phone. All you need to do is stick it in your top pocket. You see, there, there is an advantage to being a Keitha, like stick it in your top pocket, and shooting on a point and shoot camera, DSLR, whatever it is you happen to be, or your mate's iPhone or whatever, before you start, just do that, and that clap is all you need. You can send the audio and the video as separate files, and Andy has the technology 
to be able to just marry the two up as long as that clap is there it'll hear it we line the two up and off you go so it doesn't matter how far away you are from the camera it'll pick your audio up in exactly the same way that this little black thing i've got on here is yeah i have a question for andy can you still take mm. like audio cassettes <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take anything. You can, know I, me. can I send you something on uh, what was it? Uh, eight track. <laughs> yeah, eight track or mini disc. I can deal with any format. Yeah. I d you, you know, I, d I didn't realise that you were still that far in the dark ages. The dark ages. The nineteen nineties. The two thousands. Strike. I mean, mini, <laughs> mini disc has gone out, and that was going to be what killed them all. Um, but I, I've, I'm seeing it's just about time for adverts. Have we got anything more from chat before we go there, Sav? I've got quite a few questions. I'll take one now and we can get the rest of the ads. <coughs> okay. Um, and it was a question. The first one that came in was from Midge Dog, and he says, are we looking for a European or worldwide audience rather than just UK? I, I think the answer to that is simple. Yes. This is global. Um, the bigger, the better. Well, the audience is global um, in terms of the, the people telling the story. It's it's universally whoever's going to be affected by it i mean I, i've had some very sort of touching messages from our cousins across the pond and you know that they, they they are they've got their own struggles as well and if if someone sends me a video from the states that that illustrates a point that we are going to encounter then it'll find its way in i i don't want this to be limited by by where we live it's it's what what's happening you know the, they've got their troubles with the fda but we're really concentrating on on the EU uh, regulations that are, are are looming. Yeah, if I could just interject there, mm. I mean, um, uh, you, you use the word at least once tonight that, that that I recall, and that is campaign. And this is this is a campaign. This is a targeted campaign at the EU. Is that right? I would yes, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 who's going to cause us the most trouble first? Absolutely, HRA, but that's changing the subject, isn't it? Well, I, either well, we on media is going to be there, and it's going to be universally directable to who you know. We, we just need the the armory to be able to go into battle, and and as as I've always done, I always consider that we can hit them with the media. Absolutely, I, I, I mean, you know, the, the more we get out there, and the more it gets picked up, the more it goes viral the better it's going to be. And that's going to be down to everybody within the ACIG community. And I mean everybody, not just the Forumites. We need to get out to everybody with this. But that's that's probably a good point to take the adverts. And when we come back, we'll take some more questions from Sav, who I can see her fingers are going like a gun and the eyes are going backwards and forwards, like backwards and forwardsy things. So we'll be back in two minutes and uh, we'll talk more then. Don't go anywhere. And we're back in the room here on VT Talk tonight, Wednesday, 3rd of April, 2013, in the deep midwinter, as it still was. Bright sunshine, freezing cold. Sav, you said you'd got lots of questions. 
I have. I'll work my way through them. I've got a question from Lee, and he says, "Have we a time scale on this project? I setting up the crowd, source funding, etc." Oh well, we'll throw that one straight to Andy, Mr. Sutton. Could I have the question again? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> have we got a time scale on the project? Jack, hang on. Sorry, sorry, Sam. One more time. And again, right? Are you listening this time? Uh, sorry? Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> Have we got a time scale on this project, i.e. setting up crowdsourced funding, etc.? Sorry, I didn't... No, I'm just, um, <laughs> uh, Basically, what we've got to do is, is we've got to launch the crowdfunding. Um, lots of people have got to support that and, and make this possible. Um, and... As soon as we've got that in place, we can go, go, go. And the money is in place basically to, because you know we've all, we can't, we can't all take the next six months off to make this happen. But what the money allows us to do is, I can use my contacts, hire people I trust who aren't that expensive, but they can go out and gather the stuff we need. People I trust. And you know, and then they'll send me the footage, and we'll we'll package it up and 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 put it out there. So as soon as soon as the crowdfunding campaign has has achieved its goal, it's go. And we are aware that we've got time constraints in terms of the EU and the stuff they're trying to do. And and I've already got something on the go using my footage that I've been gathering over the past three four years. So it, it's happening now. But just to make that jump from, you know, the 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 homespun feel to give it that professional edge we're reliant on the crowdfunding happening and the crowdfunding campaign is going to launch in the next two or three days we've just got to make sure it's it's right and also we don't know if we set the limit to something realistic it might exceed our expectations and we, we'll be able to achieve even more that's the beauty with crowdfunding if people don't know is it's open to the world you know and and the story is strong enough that if it appeals to to enough people, we might be in a situation where we can do some real, real damage to this this flawed legislation that's trying to come in. But it is reliant on that happening first. Mm hmm. Next, Sav. Next, um, will there be or is there already a dedicated place for discussion of ideas, etc.? Again, there will be in a, in, a, in a couple of days. That's all in development. We wanted to put this out there to see what the reaction was first. And, you know, I'm, I'm as I'm sure the rest of the team are, absolutely blown away by the reaction. I'll say so. And the next one, Saf? Right, this is the last question, the rest of comments. Um, and this is from Alex. I've lost the rest of your name, so you're just Alex. At a risk of sounding silly or admitting I probably missed something, where, if we do these vids, do we send them? Is there going to be some online space to upload them to? Well, all that will be made clear if only I had my own show. Oh, hold on, I do, yes. It's your, your, my, a large portion of my shows in the future will be dedicated to directing the, the, where stuff needs to go and... and Things on vapor trails will will point you in directions. Again, it, we are just trying to find the most efficient way of doing stuff, and uh, some of that is reliant on funds coming in. You know, the facilities like Dropbox and things like that. They do cost a little bit of money, but um, we are looking to get all that in place. And I'm just trying to replicate the same way that somewhere like Sky News gathers user-generated footage, and and then be able to roll that out into something sensible. So, so I can basically have a workflow that enables me to go through the footage, cut it down, put, package it up, and then, and then, and then, then action that to to a to a sort of campaign strategy, really. And and if anybody's got any any experience in in running campaigns like this as well, you know whether that's what they do for a living or or it's something that they they'd be interested in getting involved with, well, looking for help for that sort of thing. So it's not just the media generation. It's also the you know the, the 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 action element of it as well. It's it's reliant on us all pulling together and shouting at the same time. But yes, the the the, the direction for that action will be made clear and 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 will be up for discussion as well. Which all sounds perfectly fine to me. Um, for some reason, I managed to put the wrong shot in there. It's all going to hell in the handcart tonight. 
it, it's quite important this though it's quite important that we get this together and get this done because if we don't if things carry on as the way they are you will not see this this shroud of vapor which encompasses me at the moment so have you had more comments i have i've got a lot of Thanks. comments from people coming up with suggestions um i've had <laughs> a couple of people saying they'd quite happily dress up as mods and dance to gangnam style i won't mention their names yet but i'll keep that <laughs> <laughs> skype um, it up to us <laughs> <laughs> and, and again ratfix this one's going out remembering our chat. Rat thinks I uh, won't read out her suggestion yet, but she may have to donate quite a bit more money than she suggested for me to keep that one quiet. Oh, no, no, do tell, do tell, do t give us a hint. Yeah, it involved a certain person blowing her a kiss. Oh. <laughs> That's all I'll say. You mean there's a bloke on the team that, that is going to get paid to uh, perform... Ooh. Slightly sensual services? Very possibly, but I could not possibly say anything more. I hate that, Daz. He gets all the fun. Doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> There's can... also been suggestions about um, a raffle. Sorry, Dave? I didn't say anything. Oh, it was Andy, was it? There was a bit of an audio glitch there, so I just heard people laughing and, and I was just smiling. Yeah, it was mostly at your expense. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, over to you again. There's been a suggestion about having a raffle, and there was also a suggestion from Vapor Man saying we should have a live phone in show on VTTV so people can call in live and donate. Woo! Oh, my. That's great ideas. They are. Um, I'm not sure about the technology for a live phone in pledge and money. There has got to be a way to do it. Oh, we oh one more before I forget. To sort of yeah, all we need is somebody with a van and a bucket. Yes. <laughs> you, you phone in, make your pledge, and then we send the van. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Sav, you've got one more. One more best suggestion ever that every time the word custard is typed in chat, people have to donate money. <laughs> you do <laughs> know. <laughs> Gillis will never come back. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've got 10 minutes or so left, um, and, I, and I kind of. I'm really liking the way this thing's shaping up. I've, I've got the feeling that it can be really, really effective. And, I, and I'll tell you why I've got that feeling. Um, I've got some, some uh, website-y stuff here. Now, going back December 19 and, and, and shortly thereafter, you may well recall that a lot of people were saying, this MEP's brushed us off, that MEP's brushed us off, this one's not listening, that one says they want this, this one says they want that. And one of the ones that was branded as being extremely non-committal was Rebecca Taylor, MEP. And this is, this is actually quite important, given another document that got published today. But Rebecca Taylor, MEP, is, is Lib Dem, and I'll, I'll go to camera three for this one. Why not? I can do it. Um, and as you can see, it says, how should the EU regulate e-cigarettes? If you haven't been there, you need to go. Just Google Rebecca Taylor and uh, it'll get you to her blog. Um, interestingly, though, she says, as a member of the Envy Committee with a strong interest in public health, I'm following discussions on the directive closely, although I do not have any official role. Her colleague is the MEP responsible in the Liberal Group. However... This is the important part. I am following the proposal for the Liberal Group in the Legal Affairs Committee or jury, which will naturally examine the legal soundness and clarity of the proposal rather than the public health aspects. Now, interestingly, she responds to tweets and I've seen her attitude changing as more information has been given to her by an awful lot of people and an awful lot of people have been in touch they've written to her blog they've tweeted her and as more information's come in you you'll have seen that her stance has actually changed now that 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 you know we know that she's going to be on the uh, the jury committee the committee that's got to look at the legality of all of this there's even more information that can go there and the thing about it is with this viral video type of thing 
one or two minutes at, at the hands of Andy Sutton and the legal case is there. We send that to her and she listens. And I've got to be honest, I think a lot of the MEPs are listening. All of the ones that appear not to be Labour certainly appear to be listening. So it's very important that we do this, I think, because it, it kind of it gives us the ammunition to be able to fire. As Andy said earlier on, we can, we can push these videos and videos are much easier to understand than the written word because they get couched in proper English. Dave, you got anything to add? Not really, to be honest with you. I mean, I'll, re I'll reinforce what you said, though. I mean, Rebecca Taylor is a good example, I think, of, uh, of how we have been effective, at least to an extent. Um, she, she's not the only one either. There are other MPs who have changed their tune and started off sending sort of stock replies, but because people have been uh, sort of pestering them with, 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 uh, with facts, um, they, they've actually gone and done some research and they're, they're now intending to make a stand against this and will vote against the TPD revisions as they stand. So um, it's not hopeless, you know. Um, we need a little more. We need to, to raise awareness with campaigns like the one Andy's kicking off. Um, but, you know, don't, don't, don't feel despondent. Don't feel that you're wasting your time because Rebecca Taylor is a cracking example of somebody, who, and I, I'll say this, you know, I mean, uh, she's a Lib Dem, but at least she's trying, doing her best to represent the people she represents. I, and I, I would, I would I agree with that. Just make a couple of points as well, Dave. Of course you can, Andy. Um, I say a couple. It's probably just one, but um, the there was a, something I, in chat I noticed there about it needs to be a separate account to, talking about the funding. And I don't want to think I don't want people to think that you know people are going to donate the money. It's going to go straight into my personal account, and I'm going to disappear off to Mexico and 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 be sitting on a beach vaping. That is you know that's this is purely dedicated to the campaign. I, my accountant has you know I'm a limited company. He's my accountant is has been warned about this. Um, it is going to be completely transparent. The reports on the, the the account is going to be available for all to see. Every penny will go into sorting this out because, like everyone else, it comes down to that that I'm a vapor and I don't want it to be taken away from me. It's it's you know it it's we all need to be selfish and. We can be selfish by stamping our feet and making a noise. I, I would agree. I think, you know, um, when the, the MHRA um, first put its MXL 364 out, I think everybody thought, oh, we need to write one letter and that'll be fine. And just, mm. just after a couple of comments I'd heard um, from various interested parties in Europe and, and in Parliament and, and various other places, I went back and checked all of the replies because I've got them all and I made sure I had them all and it said that there was overwhelming support for medicinal regulation for e -cigs. and I went through and read the whole lot and I, I put numbers in columns and there wasn't. I would say that 85 to 90 percent of the responses that they got said that we as consumers didn't want medicinal regulation for e-cigs. Even the ones that were using the Q word, and I refuse point blank to even pronounce the whole thing, but even the ones that were using the Q word did not see any need for medicinal regulation. However, it was the ones with the big voices that the MHRA heard. And it seems to me that if we get this right, if we get this video right, and these, this series of videos right, we end up with a much, much, much bigger voice than we've already got. Because if, if I tweet a link to one of the videos and everybody that follows me, all 560, however many it is, they also tweet it. And let's assume they've got 500 followers and they also tweet it. How many people are going to be watching that video? And if it does go viral and we end up with billions of people watching it, all of the comments that are under that, they can't ignore all that kind of thing. It's got to get people active. And the point about it is, as, as we've been saying for donkey's ages, and I get so passionate about this, yes, by all means, sign every petition going, but 
it needs 10,000 people to sign a petition to have the same amount of effect as 100 people writing to MPs or two people going to see MEPs and MPs. Now I should tell you, I've got a phone call booked with Rebecca Taylor for next week. I'm going to be talking to her. And now that I know that she's pretty much singing off the same hymn sheet as we are with respect to just about everything outside of the normalisation of smoking and the legal thing, guess what I'm going to be talking about? I don't need to convince her about anything else, but I'll be talking to her about normalisation and making the point that if these things are seen as the norm, there isn't a problem. There really isn't a problem. And the legal side of it, all of the details and documentation is there from what we've seen from parliaments in the EU that have already knocked this on the head. So that's all the kind of stuff that can be covered. And seriously, we've got to get behind this. We've got to put everything we've got into this. We've, we've, got, to, we've got to do everything we possibly can to get this thing neutered. Even if we just stall it for another three years, it gives us time. We've got to do everything we can to neuter this ridiculous and senseless, deadly legislation that they're going to put up. At the moment, I reckon I've gained five years of my life back by using electronic cigarettes. If those folks in Europe carry on the way they're going and we don't do anything to stop them, those five years are going to get wiped out and there's going to be another 10 wiped out as well. I don't want that. My wife doesn't want that. And I'm damn sure that when my grandson's big enough to realise, he'll not want that. I'd like to be around to see him marching down the aisle because I've suffered, his father's suffered, he should suffer too. <laughs> but I want to I wanna be around for all of that. And the only way that's going to happen, because I'm hooked on nicotine, is if e-cigs are there. Sorry, I'm preaching and I shouldn't. Andy, um, let's throw it back to you. Last word. Uh, no. It won't be the last word because we're going to go to chat. I'm going to give you 30 seconds and then we'll go to chat to get their final comments. Andy? Well, my, um, my final comment's got to be, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. If you're not on Facebook connecting with people, you might not want to use it socially, but use it to spread the message. It's going to come down to the point that, you know, get on every e-cig for, forum you can, you know, make contacts, get 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 networked you know don't be afraid to 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 post information and then when the videos are available they'll be there for you and i also want to make the point you know I, i'm aware that there are lots of organizations trying to do the you know trying to fight the good fight as well this is an aid to that it's not in competition with it you know we are there to produce material that is useful for this and this is the fight that we are all taking part in we'll fight them on the beaches it's all for one and one for all. That's what it all Absolutely. is. Sav, Absolutely. As, as per usual, the most important people yeah. get the last word. What's chat got to say? Yeah, the last comment I've got is from Lee, and he says, if there's one thing I've learned about the vaping community, it's how passionate we all are about it. This project shows great promise and will no doubt receive great commitment from us, the patrons of the vaping community. Bring it on. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night. Absolutely brilliant and, and so beautifully put. Lee, thank you for that. I, I, we all appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Everybody on the team and Andy especially, I'm absolutely certain of. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of the show for tonight. I might actually finish on time. It's the first. You never just know with these things, do you? Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. As I've said before, you are the real important people in all of this. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I want. It's about what everybody in the in the vaping community wants it's been a great pleasure to share this last hour with you and i'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night but until then from sav dave andy and myself say night night everybody night night, night, night.